Hey guys, this is Elias from Softly, and today we're gonna import WooCommerce variable products using a CSV file and WPL import. Now, uh, to get our file, we have several options. We could use an existing file uh, from a previous import. Uh, we could upload the file directly from our computer, or we could download a file from an URL or FTP. Now, uh, for this example, we're gonna use the download from URL option. Uh, so I have here the URL from our file and I'm going to click download. Now WPL import will get this file. Uh, just need to make sure it points to a valid CSV file, but you can also use other formats. Now uh, I don't have any products here on this side, as you can see here. So I'm going to choose new items and WooCommerce products from this drop down. Then I just need to click on the continue to step two button. All right, so we can see that WPL import detected 2,038 rows, and this is good. This is the exact number of rows we have in the import file we're gonna use. Now you can see that WPL import has uh, showed us a layout here where uh, the elements names are on the left column and the actual data is on the right. Now I'm gonna show you how this data looks on the CSV. All right, so here is the CSV we're importing. We have DSQ, parent, name, short description, description, stock, regular price, categories, uh, images, and well, the attributes of these products. And we do have 2,039 rows minus, of course, the header column that gives us a total of 2,038 rows. Now, we won't end up with that many products because most of these rows are actual variants from the same product. You can see here the Chaz Kangaroo hoodie. Well, all of these guys are variants in different colors and sizes from that same product. So here on step two, basically, we just need to confirm that WPL import is reading our file correctly. Now, this seems to be the case, uh, but say I don't want to import all 2,038 products. Say I only want to import, I don't know, let's say the hoodies. Well, we can do that in WPL import with this manage filtering options. Now, if I open this tab, you will see this UI and WPL import will use expat to filter out these products. Now, the reason we can use expat to filter these products is because WPL import is converting this CSV file into an XML under the hood. Now, if you don't know what expat or XML is, don't worry about it. You don't need to, uh, to actually know that to use WPL import. Uh, but if you do know, you can use uh, your custom expat expressions here and they will work too. Now in this example, let's use the UI and I want to use the categories element to only import the products that has the word hoodies in the category element. Now let's do that by selecting the element we want to filter by and here is categories. Now we need to select the rule and I'm going to choose contains and here on value, I'm going to type in hoodies. So uh, let's add this rule and apply the filter. So you see here that WPL import generated the expat and that we don't have 2,038 rows anymore. Now we have 390. So this is good. And now that we have the products that we want to import, let's continue to step three. All right, so here in step three, it's very straightforward. You have here some fields. Let me open up the WooCommerce add-on tab and you will notice that this is very similar to when you're creating a product in WooCommerce. Let's do that real quick. All right, we have the title, uh, description, short description, and the product data. Now that's the same we have here. This is the title, description, short description, and the WooCommerce data. Uh, so as such, we just need to drag and drop these elements from the right panel into whatever field we want them to go. Now let's do that with the name and drop it in the title box. All right. And let's do the same with the description and short description. And boom, guys, that's it. Uh, this is how easy it is to build your template in WPL import because it won't limit you to a specific file or a template or structure you need to use. You just drag and drop the elements wherever you want them and WPL import will just process them and import them automatically for you. Now let's scroll down and continue with our import here in the WooCommerce add-on tab. So since we're importing variable products, the first thing, of course, is to select variable products from the product type dropdown. 
Now you'll notice that the variations tab shows up and this is the exact same thing that happens when you do this in WooCommerce, right? So let's drag and drop the elements, uh, starting with the SQ, we have it here, and the regular price, all right? Now we don't have any surprise, but that's okay. We don't actually need that. We can leave it blank. Uh, these settings, we'll leave them as they are by default, but just so you know, they are just uh, standard WooCommerce data. You can find that here in the product data tab. Now let's jump into the inventory tab. All right, and we do have the stock element here. So we just need to enable this and drag and drop the element. All right, now for the low stock threshold, I want to say three, but you can use whatever number works for you. Uh, this stock status, we'll leave it as it is uh, because we'll let WPL import decide when a product is on stock or not. The reason for this is because, well, first, it's very convenient. It's a very cool feature. And second, we don't have any uh, stock status element here. If we did, we could just uh, select set with expat and drag and drop it here like this. Now, if you hover on the question mark, it will show you the accepted values for expat. Uh, but as I said, we don't have that here. So let's just delete this and select set automatically. Uh, these settings will leave them as they are too. Uh, now for the shipping and link products tab, we don't have that information here in this file. So we're just gonna leave that blank and let WPL import choose the default values for us. Now, uh, here on the attributes tab, it's very important that we set the attributes from our file. In this case, I have here size and color. So let's add an attribute here and type in size and color. All right, then we just need to drag and drop the elements like this. Cool. And we have here the same options we will find in WooCommerce when creating attributes. You're welcome to play around with them. We have here some advanced options for more flexibility, uh, but we'll work with the default values. Now I have here the link all variation setting, and this will do basically the same that WooCommerce does, which is create all possible combination of attributes as variants. Uh, but we don't want that because as I showed you before, here in the CSV file we're gonna import, we have all of the variations we want to create. So uh, let's just jump into the variations tab and tell WPL import how to link our products. Now to do that, we need to read these titles very carefully and compare the file structure we're using with the image below. Now let's say you have a file that looks like this, where all of the products, both parents and variations share the same title. Well, you see that uh, the title here says all variations for a particular product have the same title as the parent product. Well, if your file looks like this, just drag and drop the title element and boom, WPL import will understand how to link all the variations from your file and create them in your WooCommerce store. Now, uh, it's very important to read the titles carefully because uh, some of them are very similar, but they are actually different. So for example, we have here the uh, the all variations for a particular product have the same title, which is the same as the one above, but in this case, there are no parent products. So the image is slightly different. So uh, just pay attention here and select the one that resembles the most to the file you're using. Now, the one that resembles the most to the file structure we're importing here is the first one, because we have an SQ element and a parent SQ. Let me show you real quick. All right, we have here the SQ element where all of the rows have a unique value. And we have the next column, which is the parent column, where all of the rows have a specific SQ marked for the parent, which is this guy here. Um, so if your file looks like this, like mine, uh, just drag and drop the values in the first option like this and WPL import will understand this and create your variations correctly. Now I'm gonna continue and uh, these settings, uh, we'll leave them as they are and we'll do the same with this one. Now we have a very interesting one here, which is the ability to create products with no variations as simple products. So for the most cases, it won't hurt you to just leave this enabled. Uh, in my case, I wanna do it because not all products in this import file are uh, variations. So that's just so you know, you can create simple products with the variable import, but 
you cannot create variable products with the simple product import. Just keep that in mind. And let's continue with our import because we have everything set up here in the WooCommerce add-on tab. We have the general tab, the inventory tab, the attributes and the variations. All of this is looking good. So let's continue with the images tab. Now here on the images tab, uh, it kind of depends where you have your images hosted. If you have your images hosted elsewhere, meaning in an external server or whatever, like in this example, uh, well, you just need to use this setting here. If you have your images in the media library, you just need to use this one. And if you have uploaded your images via FTP or whatever to this path here, well, just use this option. I'll be sure to leave a link in the description below so you can learn more about importing images. But for now, let's just drag and drop the element like this and hit preview. Now, it's always a good idea to hit preview and run the test to make sure WPL import can download your images, which is the case. So let's dismiss this and continue. We'll leave these settings as they are, but you're welcome to just hover on the question mark and see what's going on there. Um, now, the custom field settings, we'll just skip them because we don't need it for this example and jump into the taxonomy tab. Now, here in the taxonomy tab, we have the product categories. Now, uh, these product categories are here, and as you can see, they have a hierarchical structure uh, defined by these greater than symbols. And we also have these pipe symbols that separate different hierarchy groups. Now, we can import this in WPL import using the third option right here and enabling this one that says an element in my file contains the entire hierarchy. Then we need to enable this option here that says separate hierarchy groups via symbol. And you will notice that WPL import sets by default a greater than symbol and a pipe for separating uh, hierarchy groups. So let's drag and drop the category element and hit preview. And as you can see here, WPL import detected correctly the hierarchy tree. And this is good. So yeah, let's click on the dismiss button, but I'll be sure to leave a link in the description below for this too, because it can get tricky. And guys, if you feel a little bit lost here, or maybe in the images tab, or perhaps in the variations tab, or anywhere really, just contact our support team and we'll be more than happy to help you out. Now, this is looking good. So let's continue with our import. Uh, we have here other product options, and this is basically just WordPress stuff, post status, post dates, comments, and we'll just skip all of this because the default values work for us. Now here we have the function editor where if you know PHP, well, you can run your functions here and do pretty much whatever you want with your data. I'll be sure to leave a link in the description below for this too. Now let's continue to step four. And here, for the most cases, we could just out click on the auto attack button and WPL import will choose the right unique identifier for us. We have here some description so to help you out choosing the right one. You can just drag and drop it like we did in step three. Uh, but in this case, WPL import chose name, SQ, uh, size and color. Now, these are the attributes here. So this works great for us because this is a truly unique value across the whole file. So yeah, let's just uh, scroll down a little bit. We'll also let these settings be by default. And if you want to know more, just same as before, hover on the question mark and it will give you a brief description of what that option does. Now here we have the scheduling options. And guys, this is a very powerful feature because it will allow you to run your imports automatically on a schedule. Now you could use the automatic scheduling option and set up your schedule here on the WordPress UI. It's very simple. Just select uh, the days you want to run this export on and WPL import will take care of it. Now you could also use cron jobs and this is a little bit more advanced and we have documentation on both of these options so like i said just head over to the description below and you will find this information here now uh, let's continue with our import and click on the confirm button now this will take a minute or two so i'll just pause the video here and come back when it's ready all right so that didn't take too long uh, let's take a peek here in the products all right, so we can see that we imported our products. 
let's take a peek in the front end where we have this beautiful website and we can see all of the images are here uh, prices that's good categories titles uh, let's open this product and see what's going on inside all right so we have the titles or description we have here the categories here's the SKU. let's select one variation uh, and we can see that the images for each variation were imported too we have the red color we have the blue the green and we can see that the SQ for each variation changes too that's good uh, here we have the description and some attributes now let's take a peek in the edit product page and we have all of the data here the images the SQ the stock and this is good guys we have the variations and here is all of the data for that variation so yeah, that's it. This is how you import WooCommerce variable products using a CSV file and WPL import. Now, I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you want to learn more about how to import or export your data and save a lot of time doing so, just check out the other videos in our channel or go to our website at wplimport.com. See you next time.